to get a nice Marvel set together. The instructions are fairly simple, and in the back of the instructions you get this comic, which shows you the the Loki aliens are invading this bridge. So Captain America rushes off on his motorcycle and saves the day. Very nice comic. I like seeing those in the superheroes line. So let's get started on the minifigures. I know that these I know that much. Um, that there's that the aliens are on the on Loki's side. This is the general, and he has a gray, a, a dark gray, should I say, torso and legs, with a lighter gray on the arms. You can also see on his head piece, which is gold, the markings on him are a little bit purple. He also has back markings. But this is not another face, this is just the back of his head. Here we have the foot, the foot soldier version, which is in all light gray. Again, back side of the head. And even his face, along with the rest of him, has different markings. Because this one's a general, and this one's a foot soldier. Even on the face, you can see the differences. And if not, then in the instructions it also shows when you're building the minifigures how those go. And now for Captain America. This is a great looking minifigure. Although he's one of the reasons I bought the set, he's also I think it's it's a good set together with, you know, the other components. I will get to watch the Avengers movie soon, hopefully. So let's get started. We'll do the simplest part and then the, the biggest part. Here we have the turret. This is a small land structure that has a flick fire missile. Works very well and has good range because you can move it up and down. Um, there's no real place in front of or in anywhere for for the foot soldier to stand unless you I mean you know I have a flat surface right here so that's why I mean there's no real place to stand unless it's in front of it and you don't want that. So usually when I put them on display and it's not on studs then I have him hold on to the flick fire missile so he's still connected with the turret like he's loading the missile in. Here we have Captain America's Avenging Cycle. We have three stickers on it. That's the, I think that belongs to SHIELD. The, and, and that's an acronym that's the military force that aids the superheroes. And we also have Captain America's shield on here. His own and famous shield. It just has to go with him in the set. It goes on the back whenever he's riding the bike with two hands. You can make him ride with one and then have the, the shield in his other hand. But I would think he may not drive it so well unless he's ready for battle and going to jump off of there. Here, here he is with the shield in hand while driving. Now the, the one problem that I have with this motorcycle is going to be mentioned... I know, I built it up for... For leaving it off. Um, I'm just going to mention it after the set. I'll mention all my thoughts on it after the set. Fit him back in there. That's a hint. <laughs> and here we have the General's Hovercraft. These are printed 
or not printed, but stick, these are stickers on there, on here, and on the side. The hard it is a very easy build, but the hardest thing was getting these gold pieces on. And I'm familiar with them from the Ninjago series, but in the space allotted for building this, it's a little hard to get it on. Might need a little help. This, yes, this does pop up and down, but it really doesn't have a purpose, too. It's supposed to stay up. And these also move, these wings also move up and down. But, um, if you're not too careful, it, it actually pushes off the gold pieces, which then flips the general. Because you just do it from here, if you watch from above... I'm moving this out. You can see that the gold piece is popping out. Because it, it has to... The best way if you're going to move the wings would be to move it with the gold pieces. It would be much easier like that. But usually, I think it's shown in the pictures and the instruction booklet, it sits like that. You also have well, boosters on the back. A, another point to the to the um, the wing and this flick fire missile, which is a nice touch, goes on going along with the turret. I I think this is like a battle pack version of or a, a Marvel version of Star Wars battle packs because you get the kinds of things in here as you would in in a battle pack for Star Wars. You get a vehicle, you get a turret, and you get, now you have two different sides, two minifigures for each. But I think Captain America can handle both of these aliens. Now my thoughts on the set. I'm going to start with right here. This flick fire missile, holding it from above, is not possible to hit. Because you have all of this in the way. The only best way to flick it is to get underneath it or hold it upside down. Just in the design that's built, you can tilt these up, but you still have the problem with the boosters right here. Number two. Again, I haven't seen the movie, but I do know a little bit of facts because I tried to do some research before this episode. This gun seems funny to me, about how he's holding it underhand. Now, I'm going to show you some pictures. I understand in those pictures, the alien general is supposed to hold it kind of underhand or almost on his hand. Right here, and another one over here. But I think if it's supposed to be part of his hand as a blaster, then shouldn't he have just... Then shouldn't Lego have just made this this arm instead just be one? Um, you know how like they have the robotic arms to go along with it. Well, something like that. You know, and attach a few pieces on the side, and make it just one arm instead of a separate weapon you can take off. Now I think this is a problem just from a builder's point of view because you don't have a lot of range of motion. If you want it close to the body, or close as being straight, this is the best you get. And with it being a little bulky, it's part of the reason why it's hard to maneuver. Unless you hold it awkwardly like this. You have his fist going inwards, the gun going outwards, and you're probably way off from your target. So what I think would be a better suggestion from a builder's point of view would be to hold it upright like any other gun and then you have better range of motion. You can shoot it forward and down and, and tilt it this way and it won't look awkward. Even when it's sitting in the rover here, it looks strange because... You want him to, sh you want the general to shoot Captain America, but really he's not shooting in front. He could probably shoot on the side, or really aim 
high up and shoot straight, but they're shooting high up. So, from a builder's point of view, I think this gun could have been a little bit better. And now my last thought on this set, I know most of them are kind of negative, but I, but I think, I mean, I'll probably say better if, if I've seen the movie and thought, you know, these look authentic to, you know, to weapons and, and figures in the movie, but I haven't seen it, so I can't really say that. Let me just demonstrate it for you. This, um, cap, this motorcycle in this set has a weird tendency to fall over a lot. If you're just rolling it around, it'll fall over like that. And I'm just pushing it forward. It'll fall over. And in, sh in short time. I don't blame its bulky structure here. I like that. Um, because that, that is just a Lego piece. That's fine. What I blame is the fact that it doesn't have any support underneath. Now, the support would probably be, a, to a bike equivalent, it would be some kind of brake or some kind of, um, that pedal that you put down when you want it to park. So it doesn't move anywhere, it doesn't tilt over, like this does. Now, that time I pushed it, if I roll it, let me just see, it'll fall over on its own. Here from the um, Lego City sets, this is from the prisoner transport. This motorcycle has the pieces I'm talking about. I don't know why Lego didn't decide to use that because it, it, it you know, you can stand it up easier and you can roll it around easier. On just any surface. All right, that maybe that was one one time it fell over, but it's a nice roll two times. But how many times have you seen this? Woo! Woo! And I just I can just send this around all day. I just dropped it. But with Captain America's Avenging Cycle, we don't have that. I could always modify it to you know just. Add these extra pieces in there, which you'd have to take off the bulk of this, fit it underneath, and then put it back in. That's very simple. I just wonder why Lego didn't put that in at all. I don't know if they thought that was a better idea than having it before, but it does become imbalanced. You do have to stand it up on your own if you wanted to. I mean, it stands good here, but if you try to push it, It'll fall over. Now watch closely on this. This is how it works. It does touch the ground. But it keeps it from... It keeps it somewhat in balance. While it's still riding. So it doesn't fall over like that. So yeah. You may have it riding and it has a little bit of a tilt to it. But... It's not going to fall completely... Over. Unless you wanted to set up a scene with Captain America trying to dodge bullets or something and the and he swerves the car out of sight like this or something that's up to you and your brick film technology I'm thinking just for as a builder and a long fan of sorry I thought I had to sneeze I just think that that could have been um... <laughs> Thank you. No, I did. So I, I think that would have been much better um, if Lego included that. And the robotic arm over here. Just judging. Let me show you the pictures again to be sure. Correct me if I'm wrong on this. But that's part of his arm. From what I'm seeing. Or or maybe he's he's holding it somewhere in here. In this purple area. That I don't see. But basically, you're using your, he's using his entire arm to activate this weapon. So wouldn't it have been easier if they, if Lego made a robotic arm for that? So that, you know, it wouldn't look as bulky as a weapon. And it would still serve 
its purpose. You know.